Welcome to Real Issues Podcast. I am your host, Martel Llewellyn, and today we have Raymond, the online coach, as our guest. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Raymond, the online coach, man. So how are you doing? Good, man. Um, thank you for having me. I'm, uh, like I said, I'm honored, man. All right. So let's hop right in. Just let the people know, you know, who you are, how you started, you know, just give them like a quick rundown on like who Raymond is, you know? Um, all right. From day one, uh, builder. So I started, well, actually I started, I started lifting because I was playing ball as a kid basketball I was a I was playing one and two point guard shooting guard and I was shorter right like I was probably freshman year I was like five four yeah I'm like I'm, I'm not much taller now I'm like five seven on a good day but yeah I started lifting to, to increase my vertical get my speed up just be more explosive and then I, I got hooked after high school I stopped playing and then I just kept lifting it was one thing that I never stopped and then in my mid twenties, I just I would always get people at the gym. Hey, you should compete. You should compete. I never thought I was ready. I thought I had to be like Jay Cutler to uh, yeah. to compete. I didn't. I, I didn't understand bodybuilding. I didn't know there was weight classes, height classes, all that stuff. Absolutely. So I ended up doing my first show when I was twenty six. Um, twenty six. My first prep, I actually did majority of it by myself, and then like last minute. Um, coach a local coach picked me up he saw me posing i guess he saw potential in me so i competed first show i took second in the open second in the novice um and i was a middleweight bodybuilder i was a i was a fluffy middleweight <laughs> for my but i i did okay and then after that i i continued to compete and then that's when instagram started popping up youtube was was there but fitness wasn't so big so i started like Posting, I started posting on YouTube just like my, my prep, my diet, my posing, stuff like that, just documenting my, 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 my prep journey. And then Instagram came and no, before that I started doing coaching. Like people started hitting me up asking me for help with nutrition and training. So I started doing it on the side as a little side hustle, but I was doing it for free for a while. And then, and then it just started growing, started snowballing and people started asking me how much I charge. And I was like, I don't charge anything. So I had to come up with some pricing, started doing that. And man, it just, within like six months, I, I was, was just busy as hell. And it was to the point where I was making more than my day job. At that time I was a, uh, I was working for farmers insurance. I was an insurance agent selling insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Six months, I made more than my, my 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 yearly my annual salary. So I decided to take it full time, and I just started uh, posting more um, on Instagram and YouTube. And then I don't know, and then my 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 name, my brand just started growing, um, putting out you know flexible dieting and bodybuilding content. And uh, yeah, I took the name the online coach on Instagram back in what was it two thousand nine or two thousand ten, and. Um, yeah, the name, man. I'm one of the OGs doing the online coaching. Like, you can't get the anything on Instagram these days. You got to have like Absolutely. five seven eight nine. Five seven eight nine. Yeah, I all that. Yeah. All right. So, what did you want to be when you grew up? You know, because like I know, like you wanted to, you know, play basketball. But like, what was maybe like your plan B or your plan C? I actually wanted to be a PE teacher. I was uh, in the process of going to community college to get my credits in to, to transfer to go do. I wanted to major in kinesiology to teach PE. Um, I just realized school wasn't for me, man. I had to work. I had to work. I had to pay the bills. And I, I didn't end up um, following through on the degree. Gotcha. All right. So what made you want to start YouTube? And who are the YouTubers that you first watched coming on? Um, I didn't really... I wasn't really inspired by anybody to start YouTube. It was just, like I said, just documenting my, my contest prep and just sharing my experience. Um, but when fit, when, when I started watching other fitness channels, uh, at that time I was following just the OGs, man, Matt Ogus, um, OG. Chris Lovato, and then, uh, Chris Jones. That's it. Another OG. Mm -hmm. Got you. All right. So for people who don't know you, can you give like a quick, you know, like a little wrap up about what your channel is about and, you know, just about what kind of separates you from other people on your channel. I got it. I'm, 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 I'm the definition of a dad bod, man. Like I'm <laughs> not right now though. Older. I'm older. 
I'm older. I got kids, married, um, business owner, self-employed. Um, so I show just raw, you know, straight to the point, simple content, man, how to live life and still, you know, stay in shape and, and, and be healthy. Um, but I juggle a lot more than these younger YouTubers and influencers out there. I'm not single, man. I got, I got kids to feed. I got a wife to keep happy. I got businesses to run. So it's like, it is nonstop. All right. Now, where did you get your name, the online coach from? I know like it's kind of like cliche, just like the online coach, but where did you, you know, specifically get it from? Uh, it was when Instagram popped up, right? My brother, my little brother, Ryan was like, Hey, you should start an Instagram. I'm like, Oh man, not another, not another platform. I'm already on Facebook and stuff like that. Um, so I had to come up with the name and I'm like, what am I doing right now? And I was online coaching. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm the online coach. And then boom. Got the name and yeah. Got you, got you. All right. So the next one is going to be what happened to the campus? All right. So the campus, I was there for a good five years. You know, it was a good run. I love that place. Got a lot, uh, met a lot of people, built my brand equity. You know, it wasn't ever intended to profit. It was just my own, my home base where I could film and not get in trouble for filming, yeah. you know, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, the lease was up and then I was month to month and the landlord at that time, we, we were friends, we were cool. And he, he told me he was trying to sell the building for a good while, for a year. And so he kept me month to month and then he sold the building. The new owner, new landlord came in and wanted everybody out in 45 days. Wow. So I'm like, at that time I was in the process of opening my CBD store. This is a franchise store that I opened and I was busy. I, I didn't have the time. I didn't have the manpower to move. So I ended up just selling all the equipment and going back to a commercial gym. Okay. I just, I just didn't have the time that it was just a short period of time that where I couldn't, I couldn't make it happen. So I was like, man, I'm just gonna, I'll, I'll just put it on the back burner right now. I'll have my own gym later again. Got you. All right. So for the people that are just coming up, you know, trying to be on YouTube or Snapchat or like whatever it may be, but what are some tips that people can get from you so that they can build their own platforms because i know like it's really hard you know like the podcast game right now is just crazy you know youtube is crazy right now like with fitness content all types of content but it's hard for people to kind of start up and actually do it so what are some tips that you can give them so that they can kind of grow or kind of you know navigate their way to you know to somewhat being successful first thing i would say is just don't overthink it you gotta yeah. just open. you have to start uh throwing up content and um yeah content is king, right? Like you have to bring value. You have to bring value to your audience, whether it's educational, um, entertainment, you know, comedy, um, inspire, inspiration of, you know, just life. Um, you got to find you, you got to find your niche. You got to find your, your identity and then just blow that up. Man. Um, I would say, yeah, just be yourself, be yourself. Stay, stay, stay consistent on the content. Got you. All right. So if now, in terms of fitness, what are some things that you wish that you would have known when you first started compared to now? Like, if you can go back in time and say, you know what, like, I should have maybe done this more or maybe worked on this more. Like, what's something, like, in terms of, like, the gym, what's something that you wish that you would have known prior? Because, uh, uh. you know, like, nowadays, man, like, I see so many people go in the gym, right? And it's like... They're trying to curl like a 50 pound dumbbell. Meanwhile, they don't have any base to their body. You know, they haven't really started on actually forming a, like a decent base for their body. But they just go in there and think because they're going to lift heavy weights that they're going to automatically get big. But they don't have any structure to their body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's nothing really I would have changed, man. I think I did it right. I'm confident to say that I, I, I did it right. I'm like my personality. I'm very OCD. I'm very patient. You know, I take things slow. I don't force anything. Um but if I would have changed anything, I probably, I probably would have cut less. Um, everybody's always trying to stay shredded, you know, getting lean. I think I, I needed a little bit more time to, to stay in a surplus. Um, I, I shouldn't have cut for so long because uh, I ran into hormonal issues um, back in 16 where I stayed shredded for two years. Wow. And that's reached now because I learned it. You know, I, 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 
I screwed up my hormones. I, it took time to bounce back and um, it was just a weird time. So, and that's, that's something that I preach now is slow and steady, you know, nothing too aggressive, no crash dieting. And you're not, we're not designed to stay lean for very, that, for, for very long. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. Now, what do you think about the fitness industry today? Cause I know that, you know, there's so many online coaches, there's so many different meal plans going out. And, you know, there's so many people who claim that they're natty, they're not, you know, there's so many controversies. So what do you think about the fitness industry today? First, now, at this point, it's super over, it's overly saturated. So everybody's an online coach and, um, you know, it's just too fast. I mean, people start lifting and they're lifting for two years and all of a sudden they got the knowledge. They got I didn't shape for show and then they, they, they think they're, they're qualified to, to be an online coach and help others. <laughs> cool. I mean, everyone's intentions are, are good, right? Someone, you know, someone, someone. They, they enjoy it. They love the fitness. They like, like helping people. They want to make money doing it, but it's not for everybody. That's the, that's the thing. You know, it's not for everybody. Um, I think there's a lot of unexperienced, underexperienced um, coaches out there doing their thing. But I mean, I, I, I don't knock it. I don't knock the hustle, man. All right. Now, what are some things that you would change about the industry? Um, just be more transparent. You know, uh, there's a lot of people that are using drugs that don't yeah. talk about it. They, they don't claim anything. And I think that's very misleading. You know, for the kids, for the young kids, I think Absolutely. it, it, it the kids to be more impatient and, and think that they should get results in like two years. You know, it takes it takes time. Decades, it takes time to build muscle time. naturally. But you can see these guys on drugs. They've been left. They live for two years, stay in a surplus for a good two years. And they put on like 30 pounds of muscle. It just doesn't happen. But that's the thing is, that, you know, because I'm 24 years old. So when I see people who started working out after me and they're bigger than me. They started putting on size quicker than me. I'm like, there's no way, you know, because there's a time period. And once you've gained, say, like maybe 20 pounds of muscle in two years and you're beating out people who've been working out way longer than you, you know, I feel like that's kind of what gives them away. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's um, it's very uh, yeah, it's very misleading. And I think it's it, it's just bringing this. Uh, mentality of being impatient to the industry yeah. like it should you know two years you should make some gains or or I'm gonna lift for two years and look like the online coach when in reality it's not gonna happen man like people come people someone said it to me at the gym the other day I'm coming for you I'm like yeah. bro, <laughs> bro. Uh, I don't miss days I've been lifting for 20 plus years and you got to you gotta get on some good drugs to catch up to me, man. Absolutely. <laughs> he will never catch you in the gym. You could probably have no. 10 years on him. He will never catch you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All right. So what are some fitness brands or just some brands in general that you would want to be connected with? Um, I, I have relationships. I pretty much know everybody in the industry. You know, I've, I've – uh, Everybody, everybody is cool in the fitness industry, industry when, when they have, you know, their brands and stuff like a Christian, Christian Guzman is a good friend of mine. Uh, we don't talk much anymore. The guy's busy as hell. I'm busy as hell. But he, he has me on his list. He sends me gear, his athlete gear. And, you know, I rock it, support him. Uh, but yeah, and then different, you know, different um, supplement companies. Uh, I'm with Ghost. I'm signed with Ghost. But there's other, you know, not supplements, but um, like food, like Mark Lobliner. He sends me um, his bars, outright bars. Um, I'm still with Icon Meals. I'm just, pre I'm pretty much cool with everybody. I'm, I'm I, I like seeing people grow, and um, it, it, it's inspiring to see other businesses just, you know, blowing up and growing. All right, now should guys approach girls in the gym? Like I know that you're a married man, but back in the day. You know, like, especially now, like, it's kind of hard to even, you know, ask a girl for their number because they go, oh, my God, oh, my God. So should guys approach girls in the gym? That's, that's a tough one to answer because I, my, my wife, Sonia, I got her number at the gym. But, but I knew her before that. We crossed paths outside of the gym. Um, like, without being creepy, you know what I mean? Like, how should guys go about it? I would say, I mean, nobody would really likes to be bothered at the gym, right? Like, especially I female. Um, I don't know. Guys are just, it's it's a little too much. It, it's it's a little forward. A lot of guys are forward these days, and they just like, you know, it, it's, 
you have to do it smoothly and, and more natural. You can't force it. You know, if you see a girl at the gym all the time. She's mm-hmm. like your crush. Say what's up. You say hi. Um, and, and maybe you get into a conversation or she asks for a spot or something. If you build that like rapport, it's like sales. You got to build that rapport. You can't just be weird and, hey, you want to go on a date? Yeah. yeah. Let me get your number. Let me get your number. It, it can't be forced. It has to be natural. You know what I mean? If you see this girl at the gym and you never say hi, and then all of a sudden you want her number, that's that's weird. Yeah. That's a- <laughs> all right. So how do you manage bodybuilding, family time, you know, work, you know, all your companies? Because there's a lot of people out here that sometimes they really can't manage even one, you know? So how can you manage so many and be successful at the same time? Man, I don't know. I don't know. Over the years, I'm bad. I, I, I've spread myself too thin over the years, and I'm just, I'm always moving. I don't have any any free time. Um, you just can't overthink it. You just got to take it on. You just got to take it on. The 10x rule, Grant Cardone, right? Like, you got to just 10x everything, and you got to somehow just prioritize things at the right time. You're going to have to prioritize things different. Got you. All right. All right. Now, is Dogecoin still going up? Because right now it's kind of, you know, going up and down, up and down. Where do you think cryptocurrency will be maybe in the next five years? I think it's it's going to be the future. I think I think there's going to be like the, 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 the top three, you know, um, Bitcoin's not going anywhere. Doge is not going anywhere. I think uh, Doge is so different that it, it's just going to it's going to stay. All right. So besides your uh, CBD companies, what else do you own? You know, like kind of plug yourself. Like, um, so the online coach Inc. So I'm 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 a corporation. So it's kind of like just an umbrella of everything. But I, you know, I do. I was doing YouTube. I took a break from that. Um, this is pretty much my streams of income. So YouTube sponsors. I'm with Ghost Icon Meals. Um, the CBD store. Uh, my online coaching. And then I also have uh, online, uh, I have a new coaching app that I put together. It took me a good year to build from scratch and that that's doing well. And that's just an alternative to my online coaching where it's a more do it yourself um, thing on your phone that, that you get all the, you get your nutrition, your training, you get workout trackers, all that stuff. Uh, that's another sh- new stream. And I'm, I'm real happy with that. Uh, that's it, man. Now, are you going to go back to consistently posting on YouTube, you know, vlogging and all that type of stuff? I don't know. That's another thing. YouTube is so saturated. Yeah, um, yeah but I mean, you have a big following and it's like, you're like, all right, all right, like in my personal opinion, like I feel like you're one of the most like slept on people in YouTube. You know what I mean? Because like nowadays people could just honestly take SARMs or they have a nice car. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden now they're like famous on YouTube because they work in maybe in like a famous gym. They probably work out and you know, like it's so easy to be, you know, quickly famous. But I just feel like you're one of the more like goats on YouTube who's been doing it for a while, who people actually trust, you know? Uh, I appreciate those words, man. Um, Yeah, it's just like I said, I just talked about me spreading myself thin, right? It takes a lot of time. Like a lot of these guys hire, they spend the money, they budget, you know, like, uh, people that edit their videos and, and run around and film them and stuff. I do everything by myself. I've never had any any help with that, that, that kind of stuff. Now, would you take on people to kind of build your team, per se? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just don't, like, at this time, like, I just don't see myself spending the money to hire anybody on to help me with other stuff. I don't know. And, and that's kind of my, I, I guess that's my mistake. I think that's my biggest regret is, um, not bringing on help to continue to scale. Um, but I'm doing that now with other stuff, other avenues. I have, we're also working on a project, a uh, new, new company, but it's outside of the fitness industry, motorcycles, um, freaks riding co. Um, we're going to be doing motorcycle riding apparel. Uh, really excited about that. we got a lot of good stuff coming, but I, I brought on two of my good friends, childhood friends to, um, help me with the company now in terms of friends though you know everyone man listen we all mentioned tankster and everyone thinks that you guys have a big beef just because you guys aren't on camera so just to kind of answer that one question what happened to tankster like did you guys have like a falling out or is it just because you guys grew apart like what happened we just kind of grew apart man our relationship was um very 
different, I guess, over the years. I was like kind of his a father figure, a brother figure, um, a trainer figure. Like I, I, I try, I, I did a lot of things for him, and you know, over the years, it just, um, yeah, he, he helped me a lot with a lot of little things. But I mean, I, I felt like he wasn't growing as a person on with me pushing him all the time. He needed he needed to do his shit by himself. You know, grow as a person, like. Yeah, yeah, I was pretty much. I gave his first. I gave him his first beer. You know, like, yeah, I showed him the ropes training. Um, you know, it was just very. Um, it got to the point where it was exhausting for me. Yeah. You know, just like I'm always pushing, pushing. I'm always the coach, and like, it got to a point where yeah, I just I was exhausted, and then some something happened. And it was just kind of the the what the the final final straw that I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta let him go. I gotta let him grow by himself. So since you always saying that, you know, you're kind of spreading like yourself thin and, you know, you've trained over thousands of clients, who do you kind of like lean on or like, who do you go to, you know, because like sometimes they always say like the go-to person has no one to go to. So who do you kind of go to? I don't, I don't go to anybody, <laughs> man. <laughs> I just do my thing. I just do my thing. And, um, I stay in my own lane, you know, the, the, you know, the drama, I stay out of that. You never hear me talking about any, any BS in the industry. Um, but yeah, I mean, back in the day when I was like kind of learning and doing my own um, research on nutrition and training, I was like, like I said, I was looking at what August was doing, Chris Jones was doing, uh, Lane Norton. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. All right. Now, how important has your massages and your, uh, you know, like the back work and the leg work, like like how important is that for bodybuilding? Because I feel like people don't take stretching and mobility seriously until they get older and like they can't feel like certain parts of their body, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's one of my mistakes over the years. I wish I would have focused on um, mobility and flexibility and soft tissue work earlier. Um, but when you're young, man, you're invincible. You think you're Superman, yeah, right? You like, do, man. <laughs> is is you can get stronger. Uh, you can your muscle your 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 muscle gets stronger it gets bigger but your joints don't you know your joints get older over the years you know and uh if if you're not taking care of yourself then the wear and tear just catches up now now i'm i'm like focused on it the past 5 years because I, I i have nagging injuries pain stuff like that you can you can um you can avoid that by starting early you know and like stretching mobility that's going to help your performance in the gym People don't understand that it's not just to avoid injury. It's you're gonna you're gonna be training at your potential, and for longevity. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, how has the Peloton been, and is it worth it? Oh man, game changer for me. It's all like like I said, my schedule is crazy. Um, so it's all about convenience for me. All about convenience. And before I have a treadmill at home, I was doing that run, running. You can only run so much. The wear and tear on your knees, your back feet like you can't you, i can't run that much uh so with the peloton it's it's the convenience so it's i got a little room separate in the house i throw on some socks throw on the shoes and then i'm on there in my pj bed um <laughs> knock it out shower start my day and then i train later so it's just it's so easy for me and it's fun man it's fun it's definitely worth the money i was on the fence for a while um to buy one but yeah, with the instructors and that whole community, the Peloton, man, they're, they're, they're crushing it. Got you. Now, for people who are, like, struggling, like, in the gym, like, what are some mistakes that you see people make that you're like, man, like, people really shouldn't be doing that? And if they just maybe tweaked one or two things, they would see gains. I think nobody, nobody really cares about form or they don't prioritize it. I think form technique is the key, like, why are you going to learn a movement and do it wrong for years? Learn it the right way from the beginning and your results, your gains will come way smoother. Way smoother. Got you. Got you. Got you. All right. Now, what are some things that you could give to people in terms of tips? Like, let's see, not, not really just fitness, related, not just fitness related, but in terms of mental health. Cause I feel like there's a lot of people that deal with mental health, not only just on social media, but in the bodybuilding community as well, you know? So how important is mental health, not only just for the bodybuilding community, but for people in general? Mental health is, is under, 
underrated, man. It's it's everything. You you once you start fitness and you get into bodybuilding, everybody gets obsessed with chasing chasing gains, chasing a physique, or chasing trophies, and it, it kind of consumes you. You you forget about life. You forget about the the, the stuff that matters outside. You know what you enjoy. You know, and then and then fitness starts. It turns into a. Um, a, a chore right it, it's like a job and it's not even fun anymore because that's all you do that's all you think about and um you got to do other things other 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 hobby you have to have other hobbies and other things that take take your your time up um and just kind of balance them all and i think that will mentally help you uh with with your fitness like it's just not you're not going to be obsessed and consumed by it all right. Now, what are some of your short-term goals? Um, man, it's hard for me to think short-term now. Everything at my age, man, I, I, everything's long-term. You know, it's the long game. It's a marathon. Um, but with my physique, at this point, I, I have enough muscle. I'm not looking to compete much anymore. I might maybe do a show. We'll see. Last one, but I, I'm not prioritizing competing anymore so i feel like i have enough muscle at this point i, I want to just stay lean i want to stay functional um i'm probably going to just maintain um lean let's not shredded but lean like where i'm at now i want to get a little bit leaner and see if i can maintain it and still balance life and still have fun and still show everybody on social media like, oh 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 the online coach he still he still drinks yeah. he still <laughs> eats but it's all in motion and now, do you think that people make bodybuilding too hard? Like in terms of like, yeah. they just overthink everything like eating, cardio. Like I just feel like because we all sit in chairs, you know, for the most part all day long or we're doing, you know, some type of standstill movement for long periods of time. And I just feel like people kind of make bodybuilding harder than it really is. Like, you know, stretch, eating, cardio. Now, now like, what's like your viewpoints on that? Yeah, uh, fitness is over over complicated, and that's that's how I've kind of made a, a name for myself. It's just simplifying everything, you know, simplifying nutrition, simplifying training. I don't do anything fancy. You won't see, you won't go on my Instagram page and see and see some fancy exercises that I, I just throw on there for 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 likes and mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yeah, I simplify everything, and if everybody knew how simple fitness really is, nutrition is like. It, it, it would be much better you know people everybody would find find that balance a lot easier and that's that's the content i put out there it's just you know you don't got to do this you don't got to do that uh don't stress this don't stress that it's not worth it so you just stick to the basics everything that i i preach is science based um go against it you know you don't have to do anything crazy all the bro science out there. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of BS out there that kind of throws everybody off. Yeah. A guy like me, like, oh, all right, he, that, he, he doesn't, this people that are like, all right, this guy is simple and he's getting results and he has a family, he has kids and he's still doing it. Got you. All right, man. So before we wrap it up, what are some of your long term goals? Like, um, like, what do you have, you know, like coming down the pipeline, not just like with YouTube, but like with business and family and life itself? I want to, with business, you know, I'm just chasing wealth, man. Um, that's one thing that I would have done early on and start investing and putting away money um, in, in, in things, well, investing in things that would make you money. You got to take your money and get that money to, to work for you. I didn't have that mentality until recently, like probably the past three, two, three years. Uh, so, yeah, I want to continue to do the whole fitness thing, coaching, but I actually want to pull because online coaching is still my bread and butter when it comes to, you know, paying the bills and stuff. Um, and I'm blessed, blessed to say that I am able to get paid for helping people, you know, teaching people, educating people. Um, but yeah, I, I, I want to take on less clients and just have it more of just like fun how it started in the beginning and then have my money working for me. For you. Yeah, absolutely. Now more time. That's what, that's what I want. Got you. And for people who are trying to save, you know, cause you know, you're really focusing on like saving money, stacking money. What are some tips that you've, you know, like kind of implemented for yourself? 
to start saving money, starting to invest, you know, like 401k, the Roth IRA? Like, what are yeah. some things that you've done? Um, you, I've had uh, IRA, Roth IRA for a while. Um, so I've been, that's, that's been like a steady, like regular thing. But with the stock market and stuff like that, I'm still kind of new to that. Same, um, you same. just got got to read, 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 man. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to just take a step back and look at the market and just follow it for a while. You don't got to throw in money right away. You just, just, just watch how it works and follow influencers that, that, like the financial influencers that you can learn a lot, man. There's so much information out there. Just like me, I do fitness, but there's financial influencers out there that, that are putting out good information, good content. You could learn a lot, but yeah, I think time, time is, is key. So if you're young, do it now, start now. You can be, you can retire earlier. Early, gotcha. All right, man. So before we close, just plug yourself, you know, tell them where that, you know, where they could find you on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Um, the easiest way to find me, I'm always on Instagram. I live on Instagram. Uh, I'm on Twitter also, but everything's the, at the online coach, uh, or you can just Google the online coach. You'll find my website. Um, my coaching app, if you guys want to check that out, it's uh, RaymondCarito.com. Uh, and that's, that's, that's direct link to, to my, my coaching app. And yeah, Instagram is the best way to find me. Gotcha. All right, man. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I very much like appreciate it. You know, like I know that you are a very busy man, but I had to get you on here because, you know, like once again, like you're one of the OGs of YouTube, you know, you consistently keep it real. So thank you so much for coming on real, the Real Issues podcast. Hey, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, man. Well, you be safe, you know, take care. And thank you once again to the online coach. All right, man. All right, man. Be Peace. safe out there. Do. Cool.